What's going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So as you guys read in the title of today's video, I just wanted to go over the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm currently watching and looking to trade in the fourth week of August in 2018. And for those of you guys that are new to my channel, my name is Stas and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So if that's something that you're interested in guys, if you want to learn more about the stock market, investing, and trading, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. And also, I just launched my Discord group chat. A lot of people have been asking me if I can make a Discord chat, and it's finally live. The link is down below in my description, as well as the first pinned comment down below in the comment section. Make sure to get in there, guys. I'm trying to get a bunch of people in that Discord chat so we can just talk throughout the day on a daily basis and just get to know each other more, talk about stocks, you you know, talk about trades, news, you know, uh, call outs, all those different types of things, you know, make sure to get into the Discord group chat for that, as well as the Facebook group for those of you guys that have yet to join that. It's called Strive Smart Strategies. That is also linked down below in my description. Make sure to get in there, guys, if you're new to the channel or if you have not yet to join the group. We're talking about stock market investing, trading, entrepreneurship, and pretty much building a network around everything that my, my, that my YouTube channel is comprised of, you know. And pretty much just learning about uh, different stocks and ETFs from each other. And, you know, it's a great group to be in. So make sure you get into that. Make sure you get into the Discord chat. And let's get started with the video, finally. So the number one ETF I'm watching, guys, is DGAS, ticker symbol DGAZ. And for those of you guys that don't know, DGAS is an inverse ETF. It's inverse being you guys. I do not have you guys in my watch list now. But these two uh, ETFs, they are natural gas-based ETFs, meaning whenever natural gas this commodity is going up in price you know you gas is going up in price which is the bull etf but whenever this uh commodity natural gas is going down in price d gas is going up in price right so we're looking at natural gas uh and d gas in particular for this upcoming week due to the consolidation the strong consolidation that we've been seeing for natural gas at about two dollars and 95 cents and it seems like it's found a resistance point at about 295 it has not broken above 295 and we can see that here once twice three times right and it's pretty much been stagnant in price and now we're getting closer to this 50 day SMA indicator right and what I'm going to be looking for in particular with natural gas is if it breaks below this 50 day SMA indicator or if it bounces above it and pushes up in price. And if it does that, guys, I'm obviously not going to be focusing on DGAS on Monday or Tuesday due to that being a break of pattern. And due to that, you know, gonna that's that pretty much will just push down DGAS's price, right? And I wouldn't obviously invest in it if this bounces on the 50-day SMA. But let's say it opens up tomorrow, it breaks below the 50-day SMA, starts pushing down towards the 180 SMA. I think DGAS will be able to, you know, be a nice two to three to four day swing trade depending on you know if it breaks below that 50 day SMA and let's look over here to the uh, DGAS ETF itself we can notice that DGAS is at a support level right now and it's pretty much been trading around $20 to $21 for the past several trading days we can see from uh excuse me from about 8 slash 8, so about 11 days ago, DGAS has been trading between $20.90. We see it broke here with $20.50, pretty much from $20.50 to $21. So we can say that this is a very valid support level for DGAS, right? And it's bounced there multiple times in the past, as we can see here, once, twice, three times, and, you know, it's been consolidating there. And what I'm going to be waiting for with DGAS, you know, just a, a, a little break above the EMA line and a push above above the 50-day SMA indicator. And that's exactly why I have an alert here set for $22. And we were talking about that in Friday's video. And, you know, if natural gas does break below that 50-day SMA indicator like we were just talking about, right, that's going to end up pushing DGAS up above the EMA line and it should be trending up at that particular time. So I'm going to be waiting very closely to see, you know, if this breaks below the 50-day SMA indicator, starts to push back down towards the 180, you know, that's going to open up a nice margin 
uh, you know, of potential for profit for Diaz, right? So let's talk about another one that I'm watching for this upcoming week. And this one's ticker symbol ATI. And we noticed that ATI has a clear resistance point at about $30 and a clear support point at about $25, right? And that's obviously a nice amount of potential for profit. And we can understand, you know, this resistance point was validated right here. You know, this is a uh, pretty much it got validated here because there was a previous resistance point here as well. It popped up there for one day, but pretty much, you know, $30 across the board has been a resistance point here. So once it once it got rejected here and started to push back down, that validated it as a support uh, resistance level, excuse me, because here it was the first time it got it, it hit resistance, second time it hit resistance, so this was validated. Now this third time it just hit resistance, you know, it gives us an even further confirmation that thirty dollars is a resistance point for ATI, and now we're seeing some strong consolidation and even some upwards momentum over the past two to three trading days at around the same support level where it has bounced in the past right and we've noticed it's bounced a little bit above the support level in the past as well so this is some good signs that you know ticker symbol ati could be finding its bottom again this is not 100 we have to wait for the confirmation but this is showing some good signs of some potential reversal but you know off the bat guys we notice that ati is still trending below the ema line and still trending below the 180 and the 50 day estimate indicator so you know this one is still downtrending in price and we just have to wait for the confirmation of the break above this ema so i'm going to quickly set Sorry for the voice crack, but I'm going to quickly set an alert here at about $26 and let's say $0.30. Cents. Create an alert, $26.30. So Thinkorswim notifies me Mark is at or above $26.30. And you know, once... If, if that is, ATI breaks above the, e the EMA line and starts to push up into this uh, into this alert that I just created, you know, I'm going to be paying attention to this stock very closely due to the upwards momentum that it's going to be having, you know, if it does break above this alert that I just set here. And let's say we get in at 26.50. Up to previous resistance points at about $30. This one offers a nice 10 to 12% potential for profit. And remember, our entire goal here as swing traders is not to capture that whole 10 to 12%, but to get at least 3 to 4 to 5 to 6% of that potential for profit. Pretty much just taking our piece of the pie, you know, out of that profit. So that's why I'm watching ATI. For this upcoming week, another one that I want to talk about was HDV. HDV is a is a dividend ETF, a high yield uh, ETF, right? And I do see potential in this one due to the uptrending pattern that it's currently on. We've seen that we see that it's found its bottom at about eighty three dollars, very solid support level there. It was trending below the one eighty SMA and below the fifty day SMA indicators, but now that we see it broke above the 50-day SMA indicator as well as the 180 SMA indicator, and it's been bouncing on the EMA line as a support level. You know, this one is up trending in price. And now that we notice that this one, HDV, is a little overextended in terms of the candlesticks, we can wait for a little pullback and a, and a, and a wait for a bounce on the 50-day SMA indicator for a better entry level on this particular ETF. And this is one that I'm going to be a little bit more patient with because it is a little overextended. We're seeing the RSI levels are showing that HDV is overbought right now. So a little pullback down maybe to about $88, $88.50 is necessary and is, is very healthy for an ETF and a stock to see a nice little correction before, you know, entering back into that, you know, ETF or stock. So that's why I've set an alert here at $88.50 for this particular ETF. And this one, let me just double check. <clears throat> let me just actually just cancel it for you guys and I'll just make a new one. Let's see, 88, we'll make one at 88.50. I want Thinkorswim to notify me, right? Whenever the price of this ETF goes at or below, actually for this one, at or below $88.50. Mark is at or below $88.50. Okay, so that's going to notify me if it breaks below this, uh, this price point here. And I'm going to be waiting for a bounce 
on the 50-day uh, SMA indicator before taking a position in HDV. So that's what I'm watching in terms of HDV. McDonald's, another one that I talked about in Friday's video. This one is slowly breaking above the 180 SMA. This one's been showing a very nice uptrending pattern over the past couple of trading weeks. And you know, now that it just broke above the 180 SMA, I'm going to be very curious and very interested to see if it's going to continue this uptrending pattern or if it's going to get rejected here and start to push back down in price since it has been you know a little bit bearish over the past couple of months let's see if it breaks above you know this trend line here and you know continues this uptrending pattern and i'm going to set an alert for McDonald's at about $163.50 just to confirm you know that it's it's continuing the upwards pattern the uptrend pattern that it's on because you know like I said McDonald's has been a little bit bearish over the past couple of months and for those of you guys that have been watching my videos for a while now you saw that I swing traded McDonald's from about the 156 7 level up to about the 170 level right here and I was just waiting for another good entry. And now that it broke above the 180 SMA, you know, this is a good sign for McDonald's slowly recovering. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of McDonald's stock. So another one that I'm watching is ticker symbol GUSH. And this is another inverse ETF, guys. It's inverse being drip. And these two trade based upon XOP, which is an oil and gas based uh, ETF. And whenever this goes up in price, Gush is going up in price, the one that I'm watching. Whenever it's going down in price, Drip is going up in price. So what we notice with XOP is that it's been on a downtrending pattern over the past couple of trading days. And it really has not yet shown uh, a confirmation of a reversal yet. But you know, over the past couple of trading days, what we notice is there's there's been some slight you know, there's been some slight recovery in the stock. We notice here on the five day, five minute chart, it was trending below the SMA indicators and the EMA line pretty much, you know, the beginning of last week on, on uh, 813, which was Monday, right? And then we notice it broke above this SMA indicator and started the trend on the EMA line and on top of this green SMA indicator pretty much on pretty much like mid Wednesday heading all the way to the market close on Friday. So there's been some some slow recovery in XOP and again whenever XOP is going up in price gush is going up in price as well. So what we can notice with XOP and I drew this on the gush chart as well is that this could be uh, you know, it's it sold off, right? It's sold off a ton over the past couple of weeks. And this could be a bottoming out point for this uh, ETF and as well for Gush, right? But we have not yet saw the confirmation because it's still trending below the EMA line and this 50-day and 180-day SMA indicators, right? And although it has shown some slight recovery over the past couple of days, we really cannot put our money into Gush, or at least I'm not putting my money into Gush until we see some nice, you know, upwards momentum and a break above this SMA, or excuse me, this EMA indicator because you know that is what I personally do because I'm a little bit more conservative I don't like to take too many risks when it comes down to trading that's why I always enter my positions with very small positions at first then I like then I usually scale into them you know I usually put in $500 with gold positions of about 3 to 4k right <clears throat> So, you know, I would put $500 in this one if it slowly breaks above the EMA line. But again, you know, it could get rejected here and continue to push down. We don't know. But, you know, the slight recovery as well as the RSI levels being completely oversold on this ETF are kind of good signs in my personal opinion. I'm going to be waiting very, very uh, patiently for this particular ETF. And I'm going to set an alert here. I don't know why my voice keeps cracking, but I'm going to set an alert here for $33. Create an alert. $33 at or above. Perfect. $33. I want it to notify me if it breaks above here, breaks above the EMA and starts to push up. And at about $33, I believe that could be, you know, a good price point for the alert. So that is, a, you know, a couple of ETFs and stocks that I'm watching to start off this week. And usually on Sundays, guys, I go through, you know, a bunch of stocks. I go through a bunch of ETFs and I comprise a watch list. You see here, guys, not too many stocks, not too many ETFs, but you know, the whole idea is to pick quality ETFs and quality stocks 
throw them in your watch list and watch them throughout the day. See if they pan out according to you know how you believe they're they're going to be traded, right? And again, very simple. If this one opens up, let's say if any of your stocks don't go your way, you can just up uh, you know. Take them out of your watch list. You don't have to worry about them anymore. You, you could add other ones that you've been searching throughout the day, right? New stocks, new ETFs that you're searching throughout the day into your watch list and focus on those instead of the ones that are performing not to their to your best, uh, to according pretty much according to your plan, right? So that's what I usually do every Saturday and every Sunday. I'm going through stocks. I'm going through ETFs. I'm using the scanner here that I made a video on. Make sure you guys check out that video. Go back. It's a couple of videos back called Swing Trading Scanner, Think or Swim Tutorial, something like that. And, you know, that's pretty much the video for today, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Make sure to join the Discord chat, join the Facebook group, follow me on Instagram, and follow me on Twitter. All the links are down below in my description. I would love to have you guys on all of those different platforms so we can just spread the community, you know, spread the positive love and the positive message and all the things that we're doing on this channel throughout all the different platforms. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video again, found some value in it. Let's make some money today, guys. Peace.